your eyes. Orange County, Virginia is as peaceful a place as you're likely to find anywhere. This is horse country and one of the richest spots in America. Old money lives here in this calm and elegant setting. But that calm was shattered a year ago when Hank Cavanaugh, a friendly and unpretentious man who was one of Orange County's most prominent residents, died suddenly at his hilltop home. And it wasn't long before suspicion began to fall on the woman who became known as the Widow on the Hill. Linda Cavanaugh agreed to talk to us only in the presence of her attorney and with the stipulation that she not speak directly about the charge for which she is soon to stand trial. I know that's why I'm talking to you. I want them to know that you have to believe in yourself. You have to reach for your dreams. And I want them to know that I'm not a murderer. Five years ago, my life was very different. I was on my third husband, and believe me, there wasn't much to brag about. We weren't getting along too well on that trip. He just left you there? Oh, it was no great loss, really. He wasn't much of a husband. I had no idea where I was or what I was going to do. And then I saw this house up on a hill. What it must be like to live in a beautiful home like that. A few years later, I was living in a trailer. I'd put myself through nursing school and started to climb out of that dead-end world. Because in America, you can be whatever you want. As long as you have the smarts and the drive and well, the guts to do it. When I heard they needed a nurse of that very house I dreamed of living in, I couldn't believe it. You must regret that today, Linda. Are you kidding? I don't believe in regret. I'm Hank Cavanaugh. Hi. Linda Dupree. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Linda. Really pleased. It's nice to meet you. Come on in the house. <laughs> now, this is my wife's favorite spot in the house. Oh, it's stunning. Come on. Oh, I hope you'll pardon the mess. I'm not much of a housekeeper. Always tracking in mud, besides. That's no, beautiful. Um, anything I can get you before you... It'd be nice if I could meet her. Hi. Hi. I'm Linda from hospice. I'm Jenny. One of the daughters. Yeah. It's nice to meet you. I'm gonna take really good care of you, Mom. Can I talk about Jenny? So you're the angel of death. Most people call me Linda. I'm just gonna take your blood pressure. I met your daughter downstairs. 
She seems nice. She is. How's the pain? Is the morphine working? Well, it's all right now. It's going to get worse, though, isn't it? Not necessarily. If it does, the doctor will up your dose. You're lucky you have a beautiful view. Yes, I've had a lucky life. If you don't include dying at 45. You're very pretty. Thank you. I wasn't always such a scarecrow myself. How does he seem to you? Your husband? You know, I really haven't had much of a chance to talk to him yet. It's gonna be so hard on him. Right now, the pain is pretty much under control. But if that starts to change at all, you need to call me right away. Um, here's some sesame oil. It's great for her dry skin. And here's a pamphlet that'll give you a better idea of what to expect over the next month or so. Do you think that's how long she's got? A month or so? That's really hard to say for sure, Hank. No, she's going to need your strength. No, I can tell you're strong. This is your other daughter? Yeah, that's Monica. She's married now. And Jenny? What about her? Well, Jenny, she's moved back into the house for a while. She's uh, taken a leave from college. Anyhow, this is the rest of the Kavanaugh's. As you can see, we've been in this part of the country for quite a while. It's wonderful. I don't know about wonderful. Oh, it is. Oh, to be settled and... You know, to have a home like this, where you really belong? <laughs> where no one can take away from you? Yeah, well, that's the good part, I guess. Where are your people from? My people? Oh, uh, well, I don't have people. Not, not the way you do. I, uh, I should probably get going now, but... I'll be back tomorrow afternoon. And if Felicia needs anything, anything at all, or, or you're worried about anything, just give me a call. Hank, my job isn't just about Felicia, you know. I'm here to help you get through this, too. Check her out. She's a beaut, man. Get that deer all by yourself, Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah, first day of the season. <laughs> Look at that one right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dottie, how about a couple of barbecue sandwiches? Hi, guys. Hey. You'll never guess who's making them for you today. Who? Wow. Oh, my God. Well, well, well. Hi. Hey, stranger. Good to see you. How you doing? I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, I thought you were in college. I was. Now I'm here. Here? What, are you working in the store? I'm working at the store, Rick. Okay. Well, you keep an eye on her, Dottie. You know, smart as she is, she'll own the place. <laughs> well, it's good to see you again, Jan. Thanks. You too. How'd that horse run, Ransom? I don't want to talk about that horse race. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, your goddaughter's working at the counter over there? I don't know. 
It's a four-point buck. Got him on the broadhead. Go ahead. What a beautiful old store. Hey, darling. Hi, Daddy. I hope she's pulling her weight. How's Felicia doing today? Oh, not too bad today. Thanks to her nurse here, Linda, this is Donnie. Hi, Donnie. Hi, hi. Has she taught you how to make an egg salad sandwich yet? I can make an egg salad sandwich, Daddy. Good. We'll have two of them then. Let me introduce you to the French here. Gentlemen, I want you to meet Linda. She's been helping out with Felicia. I don't know what we'd do without her. Uh, Linda, this is Ransom. He and I have been friends for many years. It's always nice to meet one of Hank's playmates. <laughs> and this is Rick. He's been helping out on the farm since he was a boy. Man. And this here country squire is named Kevin. It's nice to meet you both. Oh. <laughs> okay. Funny thing, uh, I woke up early this morning to go and fix that gate, and lo and behold, somebody had already trespassed on my property and done it. You know, they didn't even bother to ask my permission. Yeah, well, the whole country's going to hell, Hank, you know that. <laughs> Daddy, your sandwiches are ready. I'll, I'll get them, Hank. That's what nurses look like these days. Huh? <laughs> well, you hold your horses, Kevin. That's a very compassionate lady, and she doesn't deserve to be stared at like that. What exactly does she do for Felicia, Hank? Well, Linda calls it palliative care. Uh, Thank she you. helps her with the pain. It's bad now. She needs morphine all the time. Looks good. Yeah. Best food between here and Gordonsville. <laughs> mm. Mm. Don't forget your napkin. You made quite an impression when you arrived, Linda. Hank introduced me around. But it was a terrible time for the family. I can understand why Jenny was so emotional. She was losing her mother. Excuse me, young lady. Can you hand there? You don't have to do that. It's my job. Oh, yeah? As far as I can remember, your job was going to be uh, architecture or something? Well, architecture didn't exactly work out. You can do better than this, can't you? Maybe. I have to prove it to myself first, though. How's your mom? No, it won't be long now. Well, I'm real sorry to hear that. She's always been real nice to me, you know. And you feel like I'm somebody. You are somebody. I always thought so. <laughs> you know I would have run away with you if you'd ever had the nerve to ask me. <laughs> well, it wasn't a question of nerves, it's common sense, you know. There are two types of people in this county. You and your folks are one, and I guess I'm the other one. Hey, Hank tells me you quit drinking. I'm doing my best. Well, good. Keep at it. It's my dad I'm worried about. Yeah, well, you know, if there's any way I can help out as far as he goes, you let me know, because uh, you know, he's picked me up off the ground more times than I care to admit. <laughs> Rick, what do you think of Linda? The nurse? Yeah. Well, I'll be honest with you. Um, if I were you, I'd call up that hospice place and get him to send out a different one. Coming in? Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Almost finished. I should do it. I'll leave you to him. Any better? Should be in a minute or two. 
Morphine works like a charm sometimes. Monica's coming home tomorrow. Oh. I hate to disrupt her life. Just when she and Robert have bought a new house. Well, I guess life's not fair, is it? Oh, can you get me that jewelry box over there? Belong to your great grandmother. I want you to have it. No, no, not now. Later then. Oh. You're strong enough to handle this. No, I'm not. I'm your mother. I ought to know. You're having a rough time right now. But you're gonna get through this. You're gonna find your way and live a beautiful life. But I want you in that life. I wish I could be sweetheart. But you'll still have your father. Promise me you'll take care of him. So much alike. I know it's hard to imagine ever being happy again. You will. Is she asleep? What are you doing? Well, Linda and I were just talking. No, you weren't just talking. My mother is up there on her... Deathbed and Are you trying to imply something, Jenny? No, why don't we all just... Uh... Because, no, no, I can call hospice and get another nurse to come. No, no, that, this is just silly. It's just a crazy misunderstanding. Yeah, I'm sure that's all it is. You comfortable? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Don't be worried about her. It's hard not to be. We're so lucky to have them both. Yeah. To have each other. To have this moment. Monica was nothing like her sister. Well, she didn't have a drinking problem, for one thing. A drinking problem? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Well, it's not like everyone didn't already know about it. Anyway, I never had any problem with Monica, and, and wouldn't have if it hadn't been for Jenny. Daddy, what do you know about Linda? Well, she hasn't had it easy, you know. She could have drifted around the world feeling sorry for herself, and she put herself through nursing school. Yeah. Well, she figured out exactly what she wanted and went right for it. I admire that. 
last few months of her life, Felicia was forced to fight an exhausting battle with a relentless disease. But those of us who knew her will always remember a beautiful and a vibrant woman. Hank, my friend, I just want you to know that the members of this church stand beside you in your grief. This is your home. We are your family. Hey. Thanks. Thanks. I'm real sorry to hear it. She, she was always real good to me. Yeah. yeah. She loved you, Rick. Just like I do. Yeah. Yeah, no, I Hey, Rick. How's my goddaughter holding up? You're taking care of yourself, aren't you? I'm okay. Yeah, I'm fine. It's just that at these times... Hey, I know that everybody's always worried about me, Ransom. Everybody thinks because my mother died, I'm automatically gonna lose it and start drinking again, but I'm not. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Linda. I don't like her. That was a beautiful speech. I could tell how much you really cared about Felicia and Hank. Thank you. And that church, ugh, oh, it's such a wonderful place, you know, warm and, well, it's like you said, it's like a home. Sure. Jenny, your mother loved you so much. And she told me that as she was dying. Thanks, but I already knew that. She told me herself. I was hoping you'd come by. Well, like I said before, part of my job is helping you get through this, too. Who's Jenny? At work. Um, um, this is the day before Monica w was married. And, and we were all happy that day, and you know, that's when I stopped drinking. I told myself, I promised myself that I wasn't gonna be a drunk when I gave those girls away. You have such willpower. Well, it takes more than willpower. You need God's help. You need people around that you trust. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know what keeps me going these days more than anything? Uh, singing in the church choir. I'd like to hear you sing sometime. Would you? I mean, uh, if you wanted to, you could come to church this Sunday. I'm not sure Jenny would be happy to see me there. But Jenny doesn't come to church. Linda, don't leave. See you in church. Well, the first time I came here, I was scared to death. Why? Did you feel guilty about something? 
No, I didn't have a church-going background, so I, I didn't know what to expect. People around here seem to think you were from the wrong side of the tracks. Well, there were certain people, no, I'm not going to say who, who just weren't going to give me a break. You know, maybe it's the way I looked. People assume that because you're good looking or whatever that things come easy to you. Uh, I've got news for them. People can be jealous. And I can feel threatened. Hello, Lexi. Hello, Linda. A friend? A former friend. I guess I understand why she's nervous around me, but I'd like to think if she'd been the one indicted on murder, that I'd be a little more supportive. Did you tell Ransom you were bringing a date? Well, you think I need permission from Ransom? No, but I know people like to talk here, and it's only been a few months since. No, I'll worry about people talking. You like the fur? I love it. Well, Felicia had amazing taste. Well, I want you to keep it. She'd want you to have it, too. I know she would. About what? I just, I don't know if I dress properly. Can I get your opinion? Yeah. <laughs> Hank. Hey. Hoping you could make it. Linda, wonderful to have you. Thank you. Darling, you met Linda before, have you? Not officially. It's lovely to finally have the chance. How are you, Linda? I'm Lois. It's nice to meet you. Please come in. Let me take your coat. I think I'll just keep on. That's okay. Of course. Please, make yourself at home. Thank you. That's Felicia's fur. It's good to see you, Hank. Hank! Good to see you. How are you? I would like to meet you. Not Chinkatera. That's where Forrest and I spent our honeymoon. You wouldn't recognize it now, Lexi. It's overrun, just like every place else. Have you been to Italy, Linda? No, never. Well, you mustn't listen to her. You have to go. Are you sure you're not too warm in that coat? No, I'm fine. Thank you. You look squeezy. She. He's telling us. We're just telling us about his Jack Russell Terrier. Just so you know, it's all he ever talks about. <laughs> I think it's time we get going. Weren't you for ready? Uh, do you mind, Linda? No, it's fine. I guess we'll just, I don't know, I'll see you in church Sunday. Great. Yeah. See you in church, Lois. Good night. So you have to leave so soon. It's not exactly Mount Iris. Sit down. Tea? No. A beer. I don't drink. 
take off the coat. Like this? Sure about the tea? doing? Moving out. What do you mean, moving out where? To an apartment in town. What are you talking I'm about? I'm with Dottie tonight. I just don't want to be waiting up all night for my father to come home, okay? I don't want to have to think about you having sex with that woman when you're still supposed to be grieving over your wife. I am grieving, Jenny. I am grieving. You can't understand. You can't use me like that, Daddy. Jenny, I, I never meant to use you, sweetheart. Mrs. Houghton keeps on dropping off more of these apple brandy pies. I guess she's just feeling charitable. <laughs> I guess she's feeling more than that. She's got an eye for handsome widowers. <laughs> How's your new place? All right. Oh, I'm glad you girls could come and see me tonight. Uh, you know, this old house just keeps getting bigger and lonelier all the time. Daddy, maybe I should come and stay with you for a few weeks. I'm only a few miles away, Monica. I know, but he needs someone to cook for. Now you girls stop with that talk. You got your own lives to lead. There's no reason in the world to have to worry about me. There's something I w wanted you both to know. Uh, you know how important uh, Linda's been to this family, how she helped us through a big crisis. Well... She's helped me in many ways, too. Uh, well, I, I, I needed a friend when your mother died. And uh, Linda was there, and she and I have gotten, well, pretty close. And I just wanted you both to know that I've asked her to marry me. What? Yeah, that's why I wanted you both here tonight, so I could tell you together. Well... Congratulations, Daddy. I was hoping you'd be. It's not the worst thing in the world, you know. If it makes him happy. One thing for sure, it'll make her happy. Jenny. You can't live his life for him, and, and you can't expect him to live his life for you. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Just that we're not kids anymore. We've got to get on with things. Well, why don't you just get on with them, Monica? I know you're busy with your perfect husband and your perfect house. What's the matter? You can't approve of people unless they're miserable? Sorry. You want to know the truth? It's not Daddy I'm worried about, and it's not Linda. It's you.
know where I want to go on our honeymoon. Where? Here. Hmm. Italy's a long ways away. I got a horse farm to run. Well, I've got a lot of catching up to do, Hank. You know, when your friends talk about Italy, I want to I wanna have something intelligent to say. <laughs> and I think we should get a Jack Russell Terrier. Uh, Jack Russell, huh? Yeah. I've been reading up on them. They're really smart dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people around here seem to take their dogs pretty seriously. And I think we should get married in your church. Well, we agree on something. Mm. It'll be my church, too. I'll go there every Sunday. We're going to be so happy together. Linda, there's something I think we should talk about. Sure. Well, I, I feel like it'd be prudent if we uh, had a, you know, prenuptial agreement. Did you have a prenuptial agreement with Felicia? Well, no, I guess not. Did you love her more than me? No. What's the difference? Oh, no, I know. Felicia had her own money, and I don't. It's not about that. Not about money. I just have the girls to think about. The girls put you up to this. Jenny put you up to this, didn't she? Nobody put anybody up to anything. It's just a question of planning. It just makes sense for both of us if we proceed a little cautiously. If you want to love someone cautiously, go find yourself another woman. Hey. Oh. Oh. Hey. Oh, stop. Look. If you had died before Felicia, what would have happened? Everything would have gone to her. Because you trusted her. You trusted her without a prenuptial agreement. You trusted her to take care of your children if anything happened to you. Yeah. Trust and love, Hank. They're the same things, aren't they? Yes. I need what Felicia had. I need your whole heart. Will you give me that? Yes, I will. And I'll love you more than anyone ever has. And I'll never leave you. Oh, there was some ridiculous technicality. Felicia had only been dead a few months, and the church thought there should be time for preparation and reflection. And you didn't. <laughs> well, what did preparation and reflection have to do with love? You know, I, I think you're either in love or you're not. That's so sweet. <laughs> did you believe me? <laughs> hey. Hi. She sure knows how to wear a dress. Look at her. She thinks she's a movie star. Yeah. Oh, look. There's your sister. Congratulating the bride. I thought so, too. Sure make your dad feel good if you did, too. I need a drink. Can't have one. I know. Go on, Jen. Okay. Do it for your dad. And, uh... Mm. Okay. Congratulations, Linda. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Look, I know how much you love your father. And I just want you to know that I love him, too. And I'm going to take such good care of him, okay? I promise you. Congratulations, Linda. Thank you. Let me see your ring. It's gorgeous. It's, a, it's an heirloom from Hank's family. I just had to get it reset. Some of the diamonds. That's mine. 
My mother promised that to me. I don't think so, Jenny. I think you're mistaken. No, I'm not mistaken. That's my ring. Jenny, let go of me. It's mine. Hey, Jen. Maybe another time? So you couldn't get married in Hank's church? Are you listening to me? We didn't want to get married in Hank's church. We didn't need somebody else's permission to be happy. I've offended you. No. It's so beautiful here. A week after Hank and I got back from our honeymoon, it was the annual show jumping party. Something Felicia had hosted for years. Of course, all the pressure was on me. And I set out to show the social elite that I could hold my own with any of them. Well, everything looks lovely, Linda. Well, I did my best. Now, if we only had some chairs to sit in. <laughs> yeah, we should really get together and have lunch. You can tell me all about your honeymoon. Was Tuscany fabulous? Oh, it was fabulous. <laughs> you excuse me for just a minute? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hank, where were you? Oh, I was talking to the vet, one of the horses has colic. You haven't even changed. Well, I knew you wanted the chairs, and I didn't want to waste any time. Besides, it doesn't matter. Hank, don't tell me it doesn't matter, okay? Everything matters to these people. Every single one of them is watching me, wondering if I can pull this picnic off the way Felicia did every year. The last thing I need is a husband who, who acts like he doesn't care whether I do or not. Now, yeah, come on. There's no reason to panic. Hank, I want you to go home and change your clothes now. You're not going to get anywhere ordering me around, Linda. All right. I'll make you a deal. You go home and change into something nice, and later tonight, I'll rip it off you. What are you looking at? I'm not looking at anything, Mrs. Cavanaugh. I was just wondering where you wanted me to put these chairs. Let me just put them right over there. I just want to say how happy I am that our new little family's all together and uh, we're here on Linda's birthday. I'll say grace. Dear Lord, Thank you for this meal that we are about to eat and the loved ones that we are sharing it with. Amen. 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 That was beautiful, Hank. Thank you. You've all made me feel so comfortable. And I just want to tell you how much it means to me to have you all here on my birthday. Monica, Jenny, you had an amazing mother. And I just want you to know that I don't intend in any way to take her place. How's your house coming? Oh, uh, well, the, the new room is, is almost finished. Just trim work now, mostly, and paint. Wine? Anyone? Not Hank, obviously. Jenny? No, thank you, Linda. Of course not. What was I thinking? <laughs> Looks like it's just you and me, Monica. Sorry. Jenny claims you took things that weren't yours. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Even after Jenny moved out, she kept coming back and poking around like the place was still hers. Well, she never gave me a chance. It worried Hank sick. I think that's what killed him. Hi, Jenny. You remember Kevin, don't you? He's doing some work for your father around the farm. I better get going. I gotta, um, I gotta start on that fence. So. <clears throat> I hope you didn't get the wrong idea, Jenny. He was, he was just telling me about his sister. I'm gonna tell my father about this. I don't have a problem with you telling your father. Tell him whatever you want. Well, who do you think he's gonna believe? His wife or his alcoholic daughter who doesn't care about anybody but herself? 
He stays up half the night worrying about you. Do you know that? I'm surprised he hasn't had a heart attack by now. Linda. I know what you want. You want all this. You want Mount Iris. And I'm not going to let you have it. Sweetheart, I already do. So you started taking Kevin to church? Yes. Wasn't that a little, I don't know, uh, brazen? I didn't think so. But I guess you can't, you know, blame people for having their sordid little fantasies, but I thought if Hank didn't have a problem with it, why should they? Yeah, the floor's stolen the elevator. Oh, my. Look who's coming to church. Hello. Hi. Didn't know he was an Episcopalian. What the hell was she thinking? Don't ask me, Rick. What the hell was Hank thinking the letter? One well, thing about Linda is, she always gets her way. <laughs> Everybody's talking about it. Yeah, I know they are. Well, are we gonna do something about it? Like what? Tell Hank his new wife's making a fool out of him? Yeah, I don't have the heart. You? Hank's gonna hear about this, you know. From you? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's too bad, I guess. You know, I, I don't understand people like you. You got the best man in the whole county. You got the best piece of land. Still not satisfied, though, huh? I don't like being satisfied. I like wanting more. I like getting things I'm not supposed to have. Don't do that. I, I can't do this. Hank's my friend, and, uh... He doesn't have to know. Who's gonna tell him? I'm not gonna tell him. And you don't wanna tell him either, right? Whoa, 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 I can't, I can't do this. Shh, it's okay. He's never gonna know, I promise.
Hello? Jenny. It's, uh, it's Rick. Rick, what's wrong? Why are you calling me? I, uh... I just need to tell you something. Um, you need to talk to your father. That woman has been running around on him with Kevin. And the whole county knows it. I mean, everybody knows it except for Hank. And somebody's got to tell him. He's one of the finest men I've ever known. And, uh... You don't deserve to be treated this way. So, will you tell him? Please. Hey, Dad. Hey, kiddo. Yeah, I was hoping you'd come by. Come on, let's go in the house and have some lemonade. No, I don't want to talk to you in the house. You in trouble? No, Dad, I'm not in trouble. Then what is it? I have to talk to you about something. Yeah? It's about Linda. Jenny, sweetheart, you... You gotta get over this. Linda's the woman I love. You gotta accept that fact and, uh... <laughs> you gotta grow up. She's cheating on you, Daddy. With Kevin. What? Everybody knows about it. This is vicious gossip, Jenny. Dad, I just... Hateful and vicious gossip from my own daughter. I'm just telling you what people are saying. You're telling me what you want people to be saying. You want Linda to be having an affair, so I'll throw her out and you can have things the way you want. That's not true. Oh, yeah, that's true. We gave you everything we thought that mattered. We, we gave you a heritage, and you just never seemed to care. Maybe I did care, Daddy, and you were just too drunk to notice. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I'm sorry. That's all right. But you know, Jen, you, you gotta you gotta give up this jealousy. I'm not jealous, Daddy. Yes, you are. You're jealous of Linda and you don't know what to do with it. And so you come to me with this hateful rumor. And I just don't believe that's the way a daughter ought to be. The whole county seemed to think you were having an affair with Kevin. Well, they thought what they wanted to think. What about that old saying, where there's smoke, there's fire? I don't think it serves us any purpose to sit here and speculate on whether it was true But it wouldn't be speculation, I will Linda. say this, though. There was a lot of hateful gossip going around about me. And if it hadn't been for that little drunk going to her father, then... And with that, Linda's attorney abruptly decided to call a timeout on our interview. Your back's still hurting you? It's all right. You take that extra strength aspirin I gave you? Yeah, I took it. Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to get you something stronger. 
Where was the party tonight? Well, it wasn't really a party. It was just a bunch of people getting together at a bar. You should have come. You wouldn't have had to drink. Who brought you home? Kevin. Well, big surprise. I mean, it's no big news. Everybody seems to know about it for a long time. Have they? Everybody but me. You always think the best of people, Hank. You know that? That's why everybody loves you so much. Why would you do something like this to me? Well, it's not because I don't love you. It's just that when there's something I want, I have to have it, Hank. It's that simple. So I'm uh, not enough? No, sweetheart, you're not. But it's nothing personal. I mean, you're still my husband. And you always will be. Come on, Kevin was just a friend. Boy, everybody was right about you. Everybody? Who's everybody? You mean Ransom? Oh, and Jenny, of course. She thinks I'm trash. You are. Don't say that to me, Hank. Did Felicia think I was trash when I was holding her hand on her deathbed? Don't you talk about my wife. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Well, you have. You've hurt me and you've humiliated me. In front of my friends, in front of my daughters, in front of the whole county. And I want you out of here. What? Now, I'm going to call my lawyer. People tried to warn me about you, but I just didn't get it. Are you talking about divorcing me, Hank? I want you out of Mount Iris. I want you out of my will. And I want you out of my life. Yeah, yeah, you could say, you could say, uh, I'm talking about divorcing you, Linda. I think that would be a very bad mistake, Hank. I don't think so. I know a mistake when I see one. No, you're going back to your trailer park where you belong. Salad sandwich, Hank. That's right, Dottie. <clears throat> Is that Kevin's sandwich you're fixing there, sweetheart? I'll take it to him. There you go, Kevin. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Eat it. If I can make a mistake as supposedly wise as I am, someone as young and stupid as you are can make one, too. I'm not stupid, Hank. Yes, you are, Kevin. Now, that's not a judgment. It's just a fact. You're firing me? No, I'm not firing you. I still have plenty of work for you. Now, you can help Rick tomorrow clean out my barn. You might think about finding another church to go to, though. Daddy? And if you touch my wife again, I'll kill you. Everything all right? Yeah, everything's fine, sweetheart. Daddy? I think Kevin called when he did. You don't want to waste any time in these situations. What is it? It's not bad. 130 over 80. 
to probably just have the flu or something. I'm going to take you to the doctor. No, I'm all right. I don't need to go to the doctor. I just need to sit here and catch my breath. Well, I'm taking you anyway. Well, you can try, but I'm not going. You said you felt dizzy? Yeah, a little. It's like my arms and legs wouldn't work right. Maybe it's just a reaction to that new medicine. What new medicine? Well, it's something I'm taking from my back. It doesn't matter. Daddy, listen to me. You need to see a doctor. Yeah, Jenny's right. I'm fine. Don't worry. He's going to take it easy for a few days if I have to tie him down. Can you help me take him to the car? Yeah. No, I don't need any help. I, I can walk fine. Where do you think you're going, young lady? You go back to work there, hmm? I'm going to be fine, sweetheart. What are you looking at? Nothing. I was just thinking what a kind heart Hank has. Putting you back to work here when he could have just killed you. You know, the other thing I don't get is what the hell she ever saw in you? Maybe she just likes her fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that's it, huh? She just likes whatever she can get her hands on. You know, I know a little something about you and her. If you ever say anything to Hank or anyone else about this, and I'll kill you, Kevin. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you, Rick. I hear you. Hey, boys. Hey, Hank. Do you feel any better? Oh, yeah, I was still a little under the weather. I just thought I'd come by and see how it's going. We're getting it done, Hank. Good. Uh, Linda's made some soup. Uh, I'd like to invite you boys up to the house for dinner. Well, that'd be great, Hank. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Okay. When the interview resumed, it was with the firm understanding that Linda would say nothing further about her relationship with Kevin or about the events leading up to the death of her husband. Look, I'm not exactly willing to talk about that night, except that I look forward to the trial so that I can dispute all these vicious rumors about me having something to do with Hank's death. It's not exactly a rumor, Linda. You were indicted. Well, I'm not going to talk about that. I will say that my husband, Hank Kavanaugh, was the sweetest, kindest, gentlest man I've ever met. And that I'm going to miss him every day of my life. I thought you said she was leaving. Jenny, I'm fine. Will you stop worrying about me? You hear me? I love you, Daddy. Okay. Yeah, I love you, too. She won't leave you alone, will she? She and Monica are conniving. They've made an appointment for me at some fancy clinic. That's a good idea. You know, I've been thinking the same thing myself. <sighs> you gave me a scare, you know? Did I? Good. Hank, can't you forgive me? Can't we start over? I love you. I love you. I don't want us to be apart. Look, there's something about me that you don't understand. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. But I worked hard to... to keep my pride. And if I stayed with you, you take that pride away from me. I'm going to my room. Two go ahead, Nate. I'm going to bring this up to Hank. 
What, uh, what do you think he has exactly? Oh, you know, probably a flu or an ear infection. That might explain the dizziness. Go ahead and eat. I'll be back in a minute. What's the matter with you? Nothing. You don't have to come after me like that today, you know? Sorry. I never did anything to you. Huh? I said I never did anything to you. Yeah, right? well, I said I was sorry, Kevin. Just eat your soup. I'm eating the soup. Are you still hungry? I am. Rick? Uh, no, ma'am. No, I'm fine. Ma'am? Aren't we formal? Well, uh, I guess I better be going. What's the rush? Uh, I'm just going to go and say goodbye to Hank. He's asleep. Oh, well, uh, then just tell him that I hope he's <laughs> Paramedics, you do CPR. Hey, Linda, you're a nurse. Do CPR. I'm on my way. He's right up here. He's gone. What? Just He's gone. Please, ma'am. Just leave him. He's gone. What are you doing? I asked you to stop. He's dead. Yes, please, just try and calm down. I am calm. Leave him alone. What's the matter with you? They're trying to save your husband. Let them work. Why isn't anyone listening to me? I just said he's dead. Leave him alone. She's right. Daddy! Oh, my God, no. Oh, Daddy, no. Oh, no. I kept telling him he was going to have a heart attack if he didn't stop working so hard. <sighs> you poor girls. You've already been through so much. <sighs> I'm 
sorry. Thank you, Ransom. He was a wonderful man. Yes. I guess we should all go somewhere and <clears throat> discuss what kind of service he would have wanted. I've already taken care of it. What do you mean? Hank told me he wanted to be cremated. Cremated? We never said anything like that to me. Say anything like that to you? Maybe that's because none of you were his wife. But he told me on a number of occasions that that was his wish, so that's what I'm going to do. Schedule for tomorrow morning. Now, I don't like this, Linda. You might have at least consulted with his children before you went ahead and made arrangements. I'm not sure he would have trusted his children with a decision like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like some time alone with my husband. Daddy wouldn't want to be cremated. He'd want to be buried at the family cemetery with mom and grandma. Something is wrong. Something's very wrong. What do you mean? I think she killed him. I think she killed him and she wants to cremate his body to cover it up. Jenny, you know I'm no friend of Linda's, but I think you might be getting a little, I don't know. What, paranoid? You're just upset. You are overwrought. You are jumping to some kind of nightmare conclusion. You just need to give it a little time. We don't have time. Did you not hear her? The cremation is scheduled for tomorrow morning. She murdered our father, and if we don't do something about it right now, she's going to get away with it. Jenny, you're going to She murdered him! Don't you believe me? She might have even killed our mother, too. She's... She's... Jenny, just stop it. Why don't you see it? You're the ones who are confused. You're the ones who can't see what's staring you in the face. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm going to do something. Sorry, but there's nothing you've shown me so far that would justify me stepping in and ordering an autopsy. There's no indication of foul play at all. But, but what if an indication of foul play showed up day after tomorrow or, or next week? He'd be cremated and, and there'd be no body to do an autopsy on. I'm sorry, Miss Cavanaugh, but I can't run this office based on that sort of speculation. If I had to check out every conspiracy fantasy that came oh, across... Oh, no, no, this isn't a fantasy. She killed him. I'm sorry, but before I can stop this cremation, I need something tangible to go on. Here you go. Well, it wasn't any heart attack, I'll tell you that. I suppose you guessed that already, huh? Everybody thinks I'm being paranoid. Well, you're not, Jenny. You're not. She did something to him. What? I don't know exactly, but we're all sitting down to dinner, right? Me and Linda and Kevin. And Hank's upstairs in his room. And she says she's going to bring him up some soup. So she does, but she doesn't go. She doesn't go straight up. Yeah, I thought she makes some kind of detour. A detour? Yeah, I, I couldn't see exactly what she was doing, but I could hear a door open and close. The only door in the kitchen is the pantry. Yeah. Exactly. You think she poisoned my father? I... No, see, this isn't good enough. Commonwealth attorney's just gonna say she could have been getting a napkin or something. Look, all I'm saying is it wasn't any heart attack, Jenny. And maybe you should go and look in that pantry. You know what else? I think she was reading the will. Reading the will? Yeah. You know when I went back in there to get your keys? I go upstairs, there's her and Kevin, and she's looking at this piece of paper like it's the most important thing she's ever seen in her life. Now, I don't know what it could be except your father's will. 
I need you to give an affidavit to the Commonwealth Attorney. I can't do that. Rick, we have to stop this cremation. If she killed him and there's no autopsy, that means she'll get away with it. I know, Jane, but I can't. I'm sorry. I... Why not? Because if I do, there'll be questions, and there's, uh... There's one question that I can't answer. What question is that? Rick, you have to tell me. What question? Uh... You ever betray your friend Hank Cavanaugh? You ever sleep with his wife? It's all right, Rick. No. It's okay. He knows you loved him. And now he needs you to tell the truth, okay? Will you? Ma'am? Thank you. The attorney is ordering an autopsy now. This is your doing. Yes. Is this what you want too, Monica? An autopsy? Is this what your sisters talked you into? Do you know what they're going to do in an autopsy? They're going to cut your father up in little pieces. Linda. Shut up, Ransom. I'm a nurse. Don't you think I know what they're going to do? They're going to cut him up in little pieces. something to prove, Jenny. Why don't you just come out and say it? It's going to be hard for me. It's going to be hard for all of us to realize that Hank Cavanaugh will not be walking into the Bell Fountain Village store every day for lunch. And he won't be singing too loud in our choir. <sighs> Sorry. Linda Cavanaugh has asked me to thank you all for your kind words and prayers. And even on this day of such personal sadness. She's insisted on fulfilling her duties as Chalicer during communion. Those girls are getting really brave. 
There's no way in hell you're getting away with this, Kevin. I don't know what you're talking about, Rick. You think she's got any use for you? Huh? If you do, you're dumber than a pile of bricks, Kevin. She's gonna sell you out as soon as she gets the chance. Hey. Unless you sell her out first. Jenny, this is ridiculous. There is nothing here. Just keep looking. You know, sooner or later you are going to have to grow up and realize that... What is it? We all love to hang. Thank you. Monica! I know how hard this must have been. Oh, this is ridiculous. Now you've got her thinking it too? You know, Jenny, I don't know why people are so concerned with your drinking. Drunk or sober, you're in your own world all the same. Shut up. I guess your father's on the autopsy table by now, all cut up. It's a little strange, wasn't it, that his body wasn't at his own funeral? Stop talking that way. No, I'm in my own home, and I will talk however I want. This isn't your home. Yes, actually, it is, Jenny. Your father left everything to me. Didn't you know that? He wouldn't have. He loved us. Please leave. You don't stop accusing me of things. One of these days, I might not invite you back. You're on my property. This place can be suffocating, you know. The way people expect you to behave. All this pride you're supposed to have in who you are and where you come from. I couldn't wait to get away. The problem was, I could never figure out who I was when I wasn't here. Never felt that way, Linda? No, I know who I am. All this heritage. All this history. All the photograph albums and the family pictures on the wall. My mother's ring. You took everything. I wanted it more than you did. Yeah. Not anymore. The autopsy report came back. My father died of an overdose of morphine. That's surprising. I thought so, too. That doesn't prove anything, Jenny. Well, not by itself. But don't forget the morphine in the pantry you stole from the hospice. I didn't steal anything. Your father needed that morphine for his back. I think you'll find he'd been taking it for months. Check that autopsy report. You say what you want. But I wouldn't count on Kevin backing you up. It seems like the kind of guy who'd cut a deal to me. I'm not gonna sit here and try to convince you that I'm innocent. Why not? Don't you care what people think? You know, Janet, I really don't. And besides, that's what the trial's for. And when the trial's over, people will understand that Jenny is a manipulative, vindictive... I'm sorry. I don't mean to speak ill of anyone. But there's certain people, and well, they know who they are, that are gonna have to live with their conscience. If they even have one. Look, for me, this has been a tragedy, no question. But it's also been a learning experience, you know? It's been a journey of discovery. I see. And what have you discovered? 
that everybody has to start somewhere. That you have to fight to get what you want. And you have to fight to keep it. I'm looking forward to the trial. I really am. You know why? I climbed all the way to the top of this hill. And I don't intend to let anyone drag me down from it. Thank you.